It's not called the JBL Extreme 3 for nothing. Yes, it's because it's the third one of the, all the extremes, but also because it's the JBL Extremely Priced 3. Well, when I say extremely, we're talking 269 quid, about $299. That's not funny. When you can pick up a speaker, I predict for about $150, but at the moment, nearer $180, 190 quid. Still a lot cheaper than JBL Extremely Priced 3. But one of the things you're paying for, of course, is hundred watts AC. Oh, hang on a second. Is it a hundred watts AC? They saying it's a hundred watts AC or are they making you think it's a hundred watts AC? Because what they say is two times 25 watts RMS. Good. Thank you. We want the RMS for the woofer. Plus. It says plus. It doesn't say and. It says plus. Two times 25 watts for the RMS tweeter. Uh, that don't make sense. Now, <sighs> we're seeing this a lot now from JBL and from Harman. Um, I've suddenly become honed into it because it, it was a, an eye opener what they were doing with the JBL, with the, yeah, the Boombox 2, which they're claiming 160 watts. And they're openly saying it isn't 160 watts, it's 80 watts. And the people in the UK say they don't know why the people in the USA actually put 160 watts on the website. But they do, it's worse because they're splitting it into woofers and tweeters, inviting you to add them up when you, you don't add them up. Because I guarantee you, you ain't getting 25 watts to the tweeter. Now, that's, that's on there, what they're saying. They say 30 watts plus 10 watts. That makes sense. That suggests they are doing something that is correct, and that is correctly, you, you, you told me, you, you're good, my subscribers are good. You pointed out that you, apparently you know, I'm taking this on faith, it's using a proper, and I'm saying proper, active crossover. When it's correctly implemented, the woofers and the tweeters do get their own channel back to the amp and you can split off the power like that. So I would say that's fine if they're claiming uh, 80 watts, although they're not saying RMS. It's clearly not going to be a, a, a RMS. It's going to be a peak, isn't it? Or a max or something like that. But however, that's legitimate. What isn't legitimate is pretending it's ever going to get 25 watts to a tweeter when there's 25 watts going to the woofer. This to me says this is a 50 watt speaker that they're inviting you to pretend is 100 watts on AC. I think at some point they do say 100 watts on AC. But the point is, what's the charger? It's 60 watts to the charger. So it's never gonna pull 100 watts, is it? From the mains. So it isn't, it isn't 100 watts or whatever they're claiming. It's at best 50 watts. They are saying uh, RMS. So that's 50 watts with the mains plugged in. Probably 40 watts, but certainly less than 50 watts when it's running on, uh, on battery. Although it's not likely to be pulling that at any one time. So 50 watts at best, but I'm doing this on battery. So let's say maybe 40 watts versus, well, it probably is 40 watts versus 40 watts in the real world, but they're saying 80 watts. But let's stop getting focused on the watts. It's a nonsense what the industry, quite honestly, is doing. Not even, it's not even like the amps where they just creatively get different specs by, you know, not telling you what load it's into and stuff like that and, what, and how they're testing it um, at all frequencies and stuff like that. How many channels driven, blah, blah, blah. They're not even doing that sort of thing. They're just blatantly giving you a number and leaving, leaving you to imagine what that actually relates to. So this is, of course, it comes from the might of JBL. They are the biggest sellers of Bluetooth speakers. And so this is an interesting one. 206, so this is half price or, or nearly half the price. And I predict will be half the price as the price you will end up paying compared to a JBL Extreme 3. What does it offer for that? So first of all, to match the volume, so I've already said in my first one against the XB43, this is a loud speaker. This goes loud. So 60% on that, I've got to play about 80% already on the JBL Extreme 3. I'm already going plus one on the, what they laughingly call the EQ in the app. And that means it's actually limiting about 70%. And after that, it's gonna drop some mids. So if you just know, if you start pushing the bass in the app, it's gonna cost you volume, but I'm, I'm playing fair. One EQ for all volumes. I'm still gonna have to play this about 80%, even though it's plus one, but don't think you've suddenly got more bass than you would have had without setting that when you're at 80%. JBL Extreme 3 at its extreme price versus the Soundcore Motion Boom Plus.
Everybody likes to lose their minds sometimes. So JBL Extreme 3 overall has a slightly brighter nature. Upper mids and presence region is stronger, but then lower mids and the bass is simply not as strong as on the Motion Boom Plus. Overlay the original track. And the Extreme 3 does have a more natural bass. We have pushed the bass on the Boom Plus, but also has an unnatural 13 kHz peak, which gives it an electronic kind of sound, at least to my ears. The difference in bass is huge overall five decibels down in overall bass on the JBO Extreme 3. Add that to two decibels more in the highs and it's a very different sound signature. Even at matched volumes, there's way more power in the sound. It's a more powerful sound and you can say the JBO Extreme 3 is out muscled. Even at this extreme price you can ask what you're paying for. To be fair, it does still retain a sense of deep bass but it's doing that because it's cutting out some of the mid bass. That allows you to focus more on the deeper bass and you get a sense of the deeper bass. If it was, you know, this is a nice speaker, but there are better options, I think, out there, a lot cheaper. But they don't have the JBL logo, and if you turn their logo to the left and the right, it doesn't glow red, and that's all we really care about, isn't it? Well, here's the thing. Small logo, big sound. Big logo, smaller sound by comparison. But indoors, Mm, it's still a hard, I mean, you can still have a nice listen with that. And as I said, for me personally, it's a hard listen. It's so aggressive. It's, to me, it's quite tiring. But I, I can understand for a lot of you people out there, it's a no brainer. That's going to be a better buy and sound better to your ears. But it's not, it, it's a divisive speaker. I'm going to keep saying this in future videos because a lot of you have come on and said, you're the only one saying it like it is because you've said it's not, it's harsh and all that. But I'm not saying it's awful. I'm saying for me, it's not a speaker I listen to uh, as a go to speaker. But I can see why it's got a place. You've just got to know where that place is. If you're playing party music, you've not got a trained ear. You don't really care about nuances in your tracks. You're not playing classical jazz, atmospheric music, and stuff like that. You can, I'm sure you'll love it because it'll go loud. Any speaker that's going to annoy your mum and the people in the house next door is going to be job done for you. But other people will say, they'll probably get a bit more out of the JBL Extreme 3, which is not without its issues. Awful, nasty, terrible. Why is it there 6 kilohertz peak? I think it's about 13 kilohertz peak. I haven't written down off memory. It's around, they, I know they do this on several of their speakers. It's around 12 or 13 kilohertz. I still can't work out why they're doing it. I know it's, in theory, to give more air. It's, it's, already, it's into the harmonics already. So I, I don't really see the point. To me, it just makes it sound electronic. But hey ho, that's what they're going for that with their signature tuning. But it does do uh, a reasonable dollop of deep bass. It's overpriced. I don't care what anyone says. This is in today's market, even when it came out. But in today's market, in the alternatives, it's a silly price. If that was that was where it should be, maybe the price of that, 190 quid, it was a fair deal. JBL, JBL are looking after their fan base, but at the moment they're milking their fan base, in my personal opinion. And they certainly are. I can justify that because they're telling you to add up the woofers and the tweeters. That ain't right. We're going to go to maximum of volume. We already know this goes loud. The game, we've already given the game away. And I know all of you guys are on a, loads and loads of different videos because you can, because they've given this speaker to a million different reviewers. So I know you're getting lots of different opinion, and that's good. I'm not saying my opinion is correct. I'm just giving you my personal opinion that's an honest one. A lot of you think that's a big deal. Isn't it amazing? Yeah, uh, these days on YouTube, the fact that you give an honest opinion is a big deal. Thank you. That's where we are in the world. Anyway, maximum volume test. I think the girls with their nails done now. Uh -huh. Girls with their 
volume only one winner the motion boom plus five decibels louder a decibel half in terms of peak by 40 hertz we're 13 decibels down but you will see much more prominent mids on the extreme three and that 13 kilohertz peak is actually stronger than the motion boom plus at that very point so again a brighter sound signature overall on the extreme three game set match it's all over by the shouting Sick as a parrot. The JMBL Extreme 3 has it's, it's met its match in terms of muscle and loudness. The issue for this speaker is the price. Given the alternatives out there, or, you know, especially now, let alone when it first came out, it makes no sense, but it does to JBL. Do you know why? Because you're buying it, you're, you're paying it. If you build it, they will come. You're going for it. So of course they're gonna charge it. It's like, the, it's, that's how the free world works. That's how the free market works. Uh, supply, where's supply? I mean, did you did you go to like economics when they did it at school? Where what is the where's the price, sir? Well, it's where supply equals demand. We have got to plot it on the next y chart. But the point is, if you pay it, they will charge it. Uh, for me, it's it's a no brainer. If you can take it's if you can take the six kilohertz peak, that's a harsh listen at maximum volume. But you're outdoors, and that and it doesn't really matter because you're probably thirty feet. Or, 30 feet away from the speaker anyway, you'd buy the beach, you're lucky to be on holiday or something like that. And it's a party speaker, it does that well for a party, but it's not its not a motion boom, which I can have a serious listen to, and I can recommend to have a serious listen to. Of course, none of these are hi-fi. I can just quickly go over the specs. I've told, talked about the prices, of course they're made in China. It's not big enough the battery on the motion boom plus at 46 watt, one watt hours, given how loud it goes in the amount of bass. Smaller, only a little bit smaller, 36.3 watt hours. It's a reasonable battery. JBL Extreme 3, of course, they're both SPC. Bluetooth 5.1 versus 5.3 on the Motion Boom Plus. Both can be used in, as a stereo pair or indeed uh, to hook up 100 plus speakers. Both got USB C connections, both got auxiliary inputs, both can be used as a power bank. You can't use the JBL Extreme 3. Why, why, why? Why are they pulling these features even on speakers that, that's got a mic they're not even allowed to use, to use as a speakerphone? So no speakerphone functionality, you can do that with the Motion Boom Plus. 2.4 kilos, just under two kilos for the JBL Extreme 3 is the lighter speaker, but given the size and the handle, it doesn't feel that, uh, that it doesn't feel heavy. It feels actually like a light speaker, it almost feels lighter than the JBL because of the form factor and the handle and everything. But of course you can get a strap, oh, well, that comes with a strap for the JBL Extreme 3, both IPX67, so but IP67, Dustproof, waterproof for one meter of water, 30 minutes. And lovely, 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 they will both float. We've got two 65 millimeter waters in the JBL Extreme 3, two 20 millimeter tweeters and two passive radiators. Motion Boom Plus, two 25 millimeter tweeters, but mm, not very nice tweeters to my ears. Two 90 millimeter woofers and two passive radiators. We've got titanium drivers. We've got neodymium magnets. That looks fantastic on the spec sheet, but actually I'm not sure they put that in the spec sheet. And it wasn't until someone opened it up and we even knew they had neodymium magnets. My experience streaming YouTube was great on the Motion Moon Plus at 33 milliseconds, but awful. 161.16 milliseconds for the JBL Extreme 3 is, is poor. You're gonna see obvious lip sync issues. Both got an app, both got EQ in the app. 
but it's not a graphic equalizer. It's an algorithm-driven three-man sliders. You got what, uh, nearly a good graphic equalizer, but there is an algorithm going on, so there is some other adjustment. But mostly, it works as intended as a graphic equalizer. So, as I have to keep saying about the the Motion Boom Plus, it's not the worst speaker I've ever heard, and there are times when it can sound fantastic as a party speaker, bass heavy tracks, that sort of genre, where it, it, it's all about being underpinned by the bass. It's gonna sound great. There's no deep bass, but it mosques that well with the amount of thump. In, if, and, and your ears can take the harshness of the highs, then you're going to find it's fantastic value and you're gonna be hard pressed to, to beat that in terms of value. If you want something that's gentle on the ears and, and is multi-genre friendly, this ain't it. And there are times where, it, with the wrong tracks, it can sound, it can sound awful. I'm not saying it's an awful speaker, but it's capable, because of its tuning and how it sounds, of sounding awful, especially with bright, bright tracks and bass and light tracks. It ain't gonna come off well. JB Extreme 3, it's a nice little speaker. But when you've got the lights of the Motion Boom and the Mephil Wild box, how, how do they justify that price? It's all about the price. That's how you. That's how I personally have to judge these speakers. It's just overpriced. If it was, if it was half the price, I'd say it was up there with the go-to speakers. But it, but it isn't. It's well overpriced. There are better options at cheaper prices. That's been my roundup, and I hope to see you in another video. I ain't got that life. I ain't got that life. Ain't a project wife got my logic right 'cause I'm not your type. I ain't got that life. I ain't got that life. Sorry, my honey, get it right. I'ma just live my life. I ain't about that, I ain't about that life, uh